was alone. Well, a weird first thought to have. decided to start listing his observations for posterity. One, the whole alone thing. Two, portals. They okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to... What's the word? A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let... Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really... It might have been paranoia again. But Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No. Too obvious. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. He made another mental note. The loneliness was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. did this Thomas think he was? Chris 
Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, not actually, not technically graceful. It's probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? Grace, Grace. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. Was this good? Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. <laughs> that would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up if only for a few levels.
This was his chance, a moment to shine. This was game day. show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he practiced in the mirror all these years. to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys.
so much either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. less immediately likeable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John. would require coordination, balance, and timing. John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph. Maybe that's what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. eventually. She was rubbish at jumping, and she moved slowly. She felt a little like her continued existence was breaking some kind of natural order. The crumbling pillar was a dramatic death, she supposed. Hey, what? Claire couldn't shake the feeling that she was not, in fact, dead. It was at that moment that Claire realised she had superpowers. 
She'd need a cape. There was no getting around that. You couldn't be a superhero without a cape. Claire didn't want confusion. If you saw a cape, that made matters clear. You knew what you were dealing with. Claire was all about communication. And, you know, floating in water, which was her superpower. my skinny friends, for I am Claire, and I will save you. Claire needed to come up with a superhero name as soon as possible. Claire was rubbish. just in time, which was, of course, Claire arrived just in time, which was, of course, the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. water began to rise, Claire vowed to save this little rectangle in as many restarts as it took. Claire wondered if Thomas would make a good sidekick. Or was she more the Lone Avenger type? Well, she'd like that. The sole hero in a world of rectangles and conveniently placed pools of toxic water. made it so difficult.
probably needed a nemesis, a villain who would show their true colours at the worst possible moment, hurting all she held dear. Chris was the most obvious choice. He seemed stroppy enough, and his jump was so pathetic that it conveniently avoided Claire's insecurities. Yes, Chris. Diabolical Chris. The fiendish Christopher. Plotting Claire's downfall? If Claire was honest, and she had to be because she was a superhero, this was a troubling turn of events. Still, there were reasonably sized bodies of water to cross. over water, eh? Claire's newly heightened senses told her that there were multiple paths across with various possible configurations of the little posse. she could get them all across. John was fully aware he could do this alone. Thomas hoped he'd never have to. needed to be where there were rectangles to save. Being the only superhero in a given space 
kind of defeats the object. Spikes? It was new. Claire avoided them. She decided they were most likely her kryptonite. Not the rubbish red kryptonite either, the proper radioactive green stuff. time Thomas was here. Claire felt something had gone wrong. There was a disturbance in the force. Something had altered the matrix. The world was reacting to their progress. It was amassing its forces. It was plotting against them. Claire finally had a nemesis. this one was behind a wall. Maybe he'd never know what she could do. Maybe, maybe, they could just have a conversation, hang out. As long as he didn't find out what she could do, which would never happen so long as they stayed separate. Laura didn't have time to worry about the ominous pixel cloud. It had been following her for some time and it had kept itself to itself until now. More important. As the square, who had shyly introduced himself as Chris, bounced atop Laura, she began to worry that he was just using her like all the others had. They'd all bounced too and then they disappeared when her back was turned. Only the ominous pixel cloud ever remains, looking a little bigger and a little less hungry with every disappearing friend. With every bounce, Laura found herself less and less irritated by Chris. She started to miss him when he wasn't there, on another platform or something.
she'd wonder what he was up to. Was he missing her? He wasn't saying very much. was in love. She was perfect. He had to tell her so. At some point, he would definitely tell her. Probably best to wait for a moment the large, ominous pixel cloud wasn't about, though. Yeah, probably best to wait. was massively disappointed to run into the gang again. He'd enjoyed the alone time with his new girlfriend. I say it out loud, he told himself. He didn't want to scare her off. Others seemed suspicious of Laura and the eager-looking pixel cloud of death which seemed to be watching her. Sure, they'd use her inherent bounciness to reach slightly higher jump points, but they wouldn't strike up a conversation with her. Chris found them rude. Rude and always there.
wouldn't drop it. Who's that cloud guy? Why is he following us? What's that rumbling hungry sound he keeps making? Chris, can we just leave Laura behind?
liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. These ones seemed to be sticking around too. Not like those losers from before. She liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. <laughs> Laura liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. These ones seem to be sticking around too. Not like those losers from before. cloud was getting closer. It was spending more and more time hovering around. Laura could tell it was making the others uncomfortable.
the cloud. He'd long since stopped listing his observations, but he instinctively observed that this thing was bad. And he'd been right about the water. Thomas could tell Chris was in love, and that was fantastic and everything, but that didn't mean they could let the doom cloud keep following them. Thomas was going to put his foot down once they got to the next level. love for Laura and subsequent reunion with the guys, Thomas would probably still be with them.
Alice wondered if Thomas was still alive somewhere. He wasn't going to go looking for him, but he did wonder, and, and that, that showed character. might not be the tragic victim she'd always assumed.
had a hunch that she wasn't needed anymore. John looked at Claire. It was just them now. She muttered something under her breath about a vow of vengeance. He didn't see the point. Fighting that thing seemed to be a pretty futile idea. to get to the next portal. John hoped that he would be the next to get eaten. He didn't want to be alone.
they struggled to get to the next portal. John hoped that he would be the next to get eaten. He didn't want to be alone. First time in a while, John didn't have an audience. For the first time in a while, John didn't have an audience. First time in a while, John didn't have an audience. He was alone. Leaping from black square to black square didn't seem nearly as exciting now, it just seemed empty. For the first time in a while, John didn't have have an audience. For the first time in a while, John didn't have an audience. He was alone. Leaping from black square to black square didn't seem nearly as exciting now, it just seemed empty. For the first time in a while, John didn't have an audience. He was alone. Leaping from black square to black square didn't seem nearly as exciting now, it just seemed empty. decided to jump the massive scary gaps for old time's sake.